Dungeon Master V says, time and again, I see you using CA glue accelerator on your projects. I found that not all accelerators work with all glues. I have found the same. I have also found that sometimes when glues get old, their ability to be affected by accelerator is diminished. Um, are there a couple of brands you stick to? Well, I'm, I sort of have a fealty to Zip Kicker because it's the first accelerator I ever used. Um, it is, I, frankly, now that they make, so this is the other one, Stick Fast. Um, I've purchased several different versions of the Stick Fast system. I have their thin, their thick, some bigger bottles, some smaller bottles, and it's fine. Um, I have to say, again, sometimes it can be a little slow. I, for consistency's sake, my favorite accelerator is baking soda. Uh, it's not perfect for every application, um, but frankly, for doing styrene construction, I use it as a gusset material. It's almost like a mechanical, uh, 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 I use it almost mechanically, um, and it works fantastically. Uh, so I don't really have a specific preference for you. I keep the uh, spray accelerators nearby because they're convenient, um, and they're more convenient to me than the zip kicker, and they, I think they actually put out less volatile chemicals because I'm able to kind of get it right in there. Whereas, whereas with the zip kicker, you're spraying it out of this bottle and it's like, it's getting all over the place. I don't mind the smell, but I have worked with model makers who are sensitized to the smell of zip kicker and it causes an allergic reaction. That is no fun. Um, yeah, John Dumontel also says, what is your favorite tool that can only do one small task, but does it extremely well? Well, whenever I'm talking about this, I have to say, I get into the realm of the like the the alligator pliers. So I have three sizes here. This is a, a six inch, that's an eight inch, and this is a 10 inch, I believe, yep. Um, and I have to say, I use these things maybe once every two or three months, but every time I do, there is not many other things that could get you there. Um, uh, along the plier grabber thing, uh, this is a fish hook remover. I learned about these from Jamie Heineman. There are very few uh, long necked pliers that have a more robust grip than these weirdly stamped sheet metal tools. Like this tool feels cheap, it does not behave cheap. It is a real, nice robust grip because it's for pulling fish hooks out of fish jaws yeah that is one of those very rarely used tools that like i make sure i keep top of mind and when one breaks every now and then uh you put these under enough force and the plier can get busted or it can get open and then it's hard to make it close again um i immediately buy a new pair when that happens i've broken i guess three of these over the last 20 years Eric Meyer asks, how do you treat learning from watching a video versus learning from an instructor where you have the advantage of the in-person experience? It is really true. An in-person experience is unparalleled. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons we started our Oculus build series for Tested. Um, because when Norm and I were first messing around with this, what is it, like five years ago, four years ago, um, both of us were astounded having spent lots of time in front of workbenches watching people work, how immediate the experience in VR is. And if you've got an Oculus, uh, go look up Tested's build videos because there is, it's just fundamentally different than watching a YouTube video of somebody. Being there in 3D really makes a difference. Um, I still do most of my learning watching people do stuff on videos. Um, Not to say that that's the better method, because I mean, back when I was first starting out and working with Mitch Romanowski, you know, watching the sensitivity of what he was doing. I, when you're with someone, you're not just looking at their hands and the materials they're working with, you're getting an entire philosophy of work from them, right? The way in which they approach, the care, the mood that they're in, all of these things are instructive when they're happening in front of you. Yeah, really, I mean, I have also had teachers who spent so much time explaining stuff, I didn't learn a damn thing. Because it's not necessarily about the explanation as it is about, about what you're witnessing. Um, years and years ago, 
I came across a piece of writing that said the best book ever written on pool and billiards was The Inner Game of Tennis by Tim Galloway. And so I immediately bought The Inner Game of Tennis and read it, and it's a phenomenal book. And the reason, I, and I agree with this assessment, it's one of the best books about playing pool and billiards, and it's not about that, it's about playing tennis. But what it's really about is changing your physical relationship to the ball. Because when you're beginning playing tennis or you're playing pool, you think that this ball is your enemy and you've got to get it to do what you want it to do. And you've got to learn enough to get it to do that. Whether you're hitting it with spin with your tennis racket or you're trying to put a little English on it to make this shot and leave your cue ball where you want. And what Tim Galloway describes, he was a tennis pro, was a tennis pro who had an epiphany while teaching someone where instead of explaining to them the technique, he simply said, all right, instead of explaining to you this technique, I'm just gonna show you. And he showed them how he did something. And then he said, without any back and forth, go ahead and try it. And they, were, they got much farther just watching him without intellectualizing it than from the intellectualization. And it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely epiphany to have because I think there's, there's a place for both. There's a place for the intellectualization. I read lots of papers on tools and metrology and other things in order to expand my horizons about them. But at the same time, just watching someone use a machine with high precision is itself so much interesting information. And if you, There's a way to take it in. There's a way to take it in. And I've, oh, wait, okay. The way I want to talk about taking it in, um, Freud, when he was first writing about conducting therapy, um, when he was first writing about conducting therapy, talked about sitting there, listening to your patient talk about themselves. And he says in one of his writings that the therapist can feel anxious sometimes listening to a client talk because they're trying to remember everything the client is saying. The client's giving them information about their childhood, about their outlook on things, about things that happened to them. And Freud cautioned the therapist, the analyst, um, to not over worry about remembering every last thing that their client said. Rather, he instructed the analyst to put their head in a mind of just recept receptivity. Just sit there and let them talk and really, instead of trying to remember what they're saying, just let the, let the conversation go over you. And uh, my wife is a, a practicing marriage and family therapist and describes that, yeah, that is a fundamentally different thing to do than to try and remember everything they said. And it gives you much more access to the full scope of the story that they're telling which I think is really, and in a way, what Freud is describing in this is a specific kind of sort of meditative mindfulness of just being in this state of awareness where you are paying a high level of attention but to the gestalt of the whole thing rather than lots of little details, rather than bothering your brain, like put this in that slot, put this in that slot, put this in that slot. And I think the same thing is true, bringing this all the way back around to tools, to what you learn from watching someone do something. I've had people try and now I'm remembering. I won't name names because I don't want to I don't want to insult anybody, but I do remember learning a technique from a teacher a few years ago and the difficulty I had with them is they stopped me every time I was doing something wrong. So it was like three hours before I did the thing the first time because we were constantly stopping so that they could break down for me what I wasn't getting right and I eventually said to them, can I just watch you do this thing a few times and then give me like half an hour to kind of wrap my head around it? And that's when I finally was able to sort of get it and understand it. Um, so that is the longest way of saying, because that is the kind of answer I give, uh, that for me, there is no equivalent to watching someone do something in front of you, but watching them do it on video is pretty darn close. Uh, and having them describe what they're doing is also has a utility, but I think the most valuable thing is watching someone, watching someone do it. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.